obviously is to achieve this lower ground. So the ground floor isn't at ground level, it's at the lower ground level to achieve the two-story element. So if you're following the line of the street, um, the background level will be considerably higher. And obviously there's quite a lot of detail work that uh, we've raised and has been covered under some of the conditions, but not, not all, all of the concerns. Overshadowing the site layout, the site obviously is on a very tight street, Southfield Park. We've done an urban grain study to demonstrate how Southfield Park's characteristics are quite distinctive uh, for, for, that, for that particular area of Peswell. And um, again, we see that the spacing of the building has not been to the minimum standard, which obviously uh, you see in front of you tonight, but larger plot sizes and obviously consideration for, for the immediate neighbours. Finally, uh, my final point of the letter, um, the bungalow that's uh, previously owned the site on the right hand side, this is a garden plot, again, set in 2013, have a large window on the first floor on the gable. Uh, it's, it's in place, you see it on the site visit, uh, but it's, we're talking about a couple of metres away from the gable of that proposal. And we're told there's enforcement action against it, but as it stands today, there is a two story window which is principal window from that bedroom. Um, there's no other window you can see from the front elevation and the rear elevation. Uh, other, other points I'd like to just raise very briefly in relation, relation to planning conditions if you don't mind. Uh, the first one is working hours. There's no reference to working hours in a, in a residential area. Um, you know, and usually I'd expect maybe no working on a Sunday and maybe no working on a Saturday afternoon maybe in a, in a, in a residential type area. Up to now, there's a water cabin on site. It was delivered at 3 o'clock in the morning, um, which is a strange time, I think, for. Can I just add that you know you've got 60 minutes, 60 seconds. And the other, other point is uh, delivery restrictions, same sort of thinking, really. In a residential area, if you'd like to think that uh, there, would be, there would be conditions that, uh, especially in, in, in a very tight sort of lane arrangement, uh, to limit no. Um, I think really, I'd just like to sort of conclude this with a joke. We, we, you guessed from my approach, we're not objecting to a residential scheme, we're just objecting, unfortunately, to what's been presented tonight in terms of this final solution. So, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there an applicant or agent who wants to speak? No, so we'll cast off. Open it up to the committee for comment. Just a bit of the issue about the glazing. As you can see from the drawing on the, on the screen, there is a substantial amount of glazing on the, the front elevation. Um, and, and that 
that in itself could give rise to uh, additional overlooking. So there is a condition, uh, it's condition number eight on the uh, on your agenda papers, where we're, we're uh, seeking that, that some of the glazed panels would be obscured and glazed to minimize uh, any overlooking, particularly that might arise around the, the large panel here, the large panel um, uh, which serves the hallway and the, um, uh, the, the stairs.
somebody bring Kathy back in, please? <laughs> Okay, we're now going to go to agenda item 11, which is pages 67 to 72. units with two detached units at the entrance of the site on Edge Hill Road. Uh, it's probably even more helpful to have the, uh, the site laid out. Um, these are the two detached units here um, and then the rest of the site is, um, would be developed with seven detached properties around the cul-de-sac. Um, the application, as I said, would be laid out as a cul-de-sac and provides for an element of affordable housing at 20%. The design of the units is traditional in appearance and quite simple, complementing existing properties within the area. Off-street off -street parking is provided for each unit. The council's normal interface distances are all achieved and in fact greater than the 24 metres that would normally be expected. The site falls within an area designated for residential purposes and as such the proposals conform with surrounding land uses and would meet an identified housing need. There is no qualifying petition of, of objection, but the application was removed from delegation at the request of Council Bailey for the reasons outlined at the bottom of page 68 of your report. The application is recommended for approval, subject to a section 106 legal agreement uh, around the provision of affordable housing. Councillor Baker, would you like to speak to this? Members, I won't keep you too long. Uh, I'm not opposed to development on the site, but concerns have been raised by local residents at bounds, road safety, access and egress, off Ed Chill Road. Ed Chill Road is not going to be around that road as well. It signals the stars on a 30 mile an hour, uh, uh, 20 mile an hour uh, traffic car is deep in, in Big Lane, uh, and there is a tiny amount of that on the road, not around that. Edgehill Road at the top end there is quite narrow and there are concerns about road safety. Uh, I notice in the application, uh, in the condition, that there is a condition uh, detailed drawing of the new access road of Edgehill Road that is submitted to and approved by the local planning authority, etc. etc. So I'm happy with that condition, providing that condition is monitored because if you look at condition 4, Conditions for an open development including the elements of the to vegetation clearance to take place. I think somebody goes and have a look at the bottom of some of the cats. It's all boarded up, it's all covered in sheep in the walls, but as you drive past, you can see air canals and, and vegetation. So if, if, if they're not going to adhere to condition four, I have real concerns about permitting a condition nine and real concerns. But no objection to development, just concerns about road safety. And as a committee to ensure that strong weight is given to the road safety concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would you like to just comment regarding those conditions? Sorry, to you, Chair. Um, I, I just think I've just made a note of Council Member's comments in, in relation to what might be going on site already, and I'll make sure something goes out. And I'll look at that uh, for the end of the week, and I'll make sure that the rest of the, uh, the conditions on this application. Uh, particularly those that are uh, uh, pre-commencement conditions are, are carefully monitored as, as, as the scheme progresses uh, forward if, 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 if it's approved. Any comments from the committee? The officer's recommendation is to approve the subject of the commission as listed. Do we have a mover? Thank you. Do we have a second mover? Thank you. Can we go to the vote, please? All those in favour? That's unanimous. That's carried. Thank you.
the spike at about 8 o'clock shows about 62 um, decibels. The, um, the report uh, indicates that the delivery noise will be in the region, I think it says 51 decibels. So I don't think from the consultant's report that we're expecting a leap of 10 decibels from the background level that's on that basis that we've had to make our, um, our representation, our, our opinion. Um, with regards to the um, reversing lights, reversing lights, reversing soundless, um, obviously that is a health and safety concern um, for us. Um, we don't want to protect people's um, immunity uh, at the risk of workers. Um, the employer in this situation would have to make sure that their risk assessment takes that into account, um, and whether that's for the use of maximum or restricting uh, or other restrictions, um, that would be something that they would have a legal obligation um, to do. Um, I think it was a third point, but it's still I think it was the cages. The cages, yeah. Um, again, they are noisy, and that's why that condition is in there. Um, we, again, again, it would be for the employer to make sure it's a safe way of moving the quantities involved. I don't understand that was concerned. We've, we've basically taken uh, what the consultants uh, here have said, uh, and if they can uh, have a safe system of work that actually happens, um, that we couldn't um, find the way. We, we didn't feel there was any sustainable objection for us to make that would be really defendable uh, in, in that case. Okay, Matthew, could you just pick up on the implausibility of that? Thank you, through you, chairs, uh, uh, chairs, uh, through you, chair. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, you know, it's important to say that you, know, you, you have to you have to set off uh, from starting point. You can't set off from starting point rather that uh, you're going to grant permission to subject to conditions, and that um, the, the applicant is going to breach those those conditions. Um, we, we've tried to tie the conditions down. Uh, as carefully as we can, and we've been back and forth with the applicants and also with our colleagues in the environment and health to try and make sure that those conditions are not only precise but they are also enforceable. Uh, we've also had regard to the uh, Marks and Spencer Simply Food Store in Heswell uh, and the way that that site is operated. Um, and I think it's fair to say that, that uh, we don't have any issues in the way that that site is managed um, and that the operator themselves uh, manages. Uh, the, the store in a uh, in a neighbour-friendly neighbor way. Um, uh, as you may be aware, this this application was first submitted for a 6:30 start, and, and we did feel that that was that was too early. Uh, but, but we have had regard to uh, the noise assessment, the conditions that we're proposing to attach, and as I said, the way that the store in Heswell is operated, and we we've got uh, a significant level. Um, not only can be enforced, but will also be compliant. Um, I share the practicality concerns. Actually, having worked for a monitor shop very similar to this, I can say that the truck drivers will also keep them on there until they're in the yard and then it's too late. Um, also, um, again, for the previous device, which implies that you can sell on this.